I didn't think of myself as an artist. I didn't think what I was doing was really any good. Through high school, like to draw as a pastime, you know, just doodle, whatever, cartoons, this and that. I did heavily identify with my grandfather. He was always tinkering and making things. He was never considered himself an artist, but he would make rings out of copper in the basement, or we'd make rings out of bone. That's where I thought this was all coming from. And when I met my father, it was like, whoa, now I have to reevaluate my identity. I didn't know if he was even alive. And I come to find out we shared a lot of similar um, ideas as far as art and politics. But, you know, he's way more like bohemian than me. I mean, I made my living in working in factories, and he just made it hand to mouth a lot of times. My grandfather was, he was a tough guy. He went through the Depression. He worked as a stonemason. He worked at Glidden. That's what I was kind of raised with, that work ethic. One week after I graduated, I was working at General Battery. And I remember the human resource person trying to talk me out of this. Like, I don't know why this kid wants to work here at a battery company. He's got his whole life ahead of him. Nine years later, I left General Battery and went to Carpenter Steel. I have a reputation of being one of the fastest steelmakers ever in that shop. I want to prove to people, I'll make your steel, I'll make it right, I'll make it fast. Just leave me, there's my anger, the heck alone. I don't know why, but I was an angry, angry kid, teenager, what have you. I guess my anger is in search of a place to rest. If I, if I feel strongly about something, I'll make a piece about it and I get it off my chest. Of course, all your surroundings can be put into your pieces. All of the big things, love and religion, God and universe and this and that, can be taken apart and then put back together in a drawing to see how is this world put together or how does it really work. I love making art or I love expressing my feelings and getting it out there in pictures. It's the only thing I ever had control of in my life. But it's really uh, intimidating to uh, follow your creative muse and do it in a public way. The art is a perfect medium. I'm yelling, screaming out loud, and it doesn't say anything unless you go up and look at it. People will just find that little thing that you thought was not an afterthought but something like i'll just hide that in there we'll see if anybody notice somebody will notice it's kind of embarrassing to be an artist <laughs> because you know it's like modern art or it's weird or it's you're not supposed to take this stuff seriously in my uh the way i was raised to make your ideas and paint them and put them on a wall and have people come around it's like Oh, God, get over yourself. But that's part of me. And then the other part is, sure, I would love to be hanging in the Whitney Museum. This is what it is. Like, I can sell some art. It would sustain somewhat of a life, but I never quit my job. So then nobody could say, you know, you're crazy. I mean, it would have been bad enough I didn't go to college, and now I quit my job, and I think I'm going to doodle for a living? Where am I come off at? Okay, I'll work for 40 years retire out of the mills, and if I still have enough in the tank, maybe I'll be an official artist trying to survive on my druthers.